What's up guys, how is everyone doing? Welcome back to another video. Uh, thank you for clicking on the video and today we're looking at part two of my creative process. So today we're gonna go in a bit more, a bit more in detail of, of my process and I'm gonna also play a bit of drums on one of the sessions that I have done thus far. So, firstly, before we can even step on the drum kit, there's a couple of things that we need to know. And the first one that I like to go on to is know the song. Now, knowing the song is very important because we look at the structure of the song, the genre of the song. The genre of the song is very important because it's also gonna determine my choices in terms of my groove, my fill, um, and especially the drums that I use, the cymbals that I use, and the heads that I use. The structure as well is also very important because we go in a bit more in-depth into the song and we look at the order of the song, how many times we're playing the verse, how many times we're playing the chorus, is there a pre-chorus, is there an interlude, how many times we're playing the bridge. It's so important to make sure that as a session drummer, or even a drummer in church or wherever, it's so important to know the structure of the song. So that's going to help you to be more confident when you are playing. Uh, the next thing that I want to focus on is obviously the flow. Now, when I talk about flow, I, I talk about your groove and your flow working hand in hand. So the type of groove that I pick for the song, my flow needs to, to fit in with that groove. And it's like if I'm playing like a heavy rock beat, um, I can't go and play a jazz for or vice versa. Okay, so those are that flow is also very important, especially the groove and the full that you pick. It has to also go then with the flow of the song, which is also very important. Okay, so then from there we go to the drum kit that you choose, or the drums should I say that you choose the heads that you choose and the symbols that you choose. Now this is very important. The genre that I'm playing will determine the size of the drums that I'm using. So if I'm playing something that's more contemporary and more rock on, on, a, on a rock kind of feel or alternative kind of feel, then I'm going to be using bigger size drums. If I'm playing more on the pop and gospel or R&B kind of feel, I'm going to have smaller drums when I'm playing. Okay, and also with the heads. Again, if I'm if I'm playing uh, a more of a, a rock kind of feel, I'm generally going to be playing double ply or two ply coated heads. And if I'm playing more of a gospel kind of feel or R and B or pop, I'm generally going to be playing with clear heads. All of that affects the sound. Even my cymbals as well. So the bigger my cymbals, that's going to be. If I'm using bigger cymbals on my kit, that's going to be. Uh, related more to, to rock again and more contemporary uh, style of music and for my smaller size cymbals and my much more brighter cymbals uh, that cut through the mix for R&B, gospel and pop. Now if you look at my kit I've got four cymbals set up at the moment. I've got a 16 inch crash that's more on the brighter side then I've got an 18 inch crash um, that's also on a brighter side but uh, at a much uh, lower uh, fundamental pitch and then I've also got uh, a traditional ride that's I mean I can get away with almost any type of song with this kind of ride except for maybe jazz uh, I wouldn't use this for jazz and then this is my effect symbol All right this is a a 19 inch Istanbul Agop dark crash okay so all of the symbols that I play are Istanbul Agop and this symbol is, is something weird and funky and all things good and nice. I just love the symbol. Okay, so these are all the things that we need, need to take into consideration before we actually even start playing the drums. I mean, look at everything that I've covered and even, even in the last video. Uh, those are the things that we need to be looking at before we even actually start playing. The one part that I want to go on to is the actual groove. Okay, so the groove for this particular uh, song 
is as I said it's gonna be a very percussive kind of feel and so I'm just gonna play that for you now Okay, so if you heard that, as I said, there's nothing fancy to that. It's very musical because that's the angle that I was going for. There's not, there's not a lot of dense notes, right? So, I mean, I've, I've seen so many drummers uh, in the past and, and present uh, just trying to play a whole lot of notes on the drum kit and just trying to play as fast as possible and not really respecting the song and not really trying to to make sure that they are really embodying the song in what they are in what they are playing, and so that's what I've tried to do with this track. Is I've tried to listen to all of the parts. I've tried to listen to uh, the guitarist's rhythm section and all of his picking and, and his strumming to actually help me to come up with this kind of groove. Uh, I, I speak a, a little bit about that in the first video, so. The main things that I use to try and help me out is I use texture. So if you listen to the first part, going into the downbeat of two, I have this. All right, so that's also a texture. Then for the other parts, I'm using the toms. Then um, if you listen carefully, you'll, see, you'll hear that when I'm playing the snare again, it's not on the downbeat of four, but it's on the end of four. So in, to give me like a timbali kind of sound, I've, I've cranked the snare up. And so it, it gives me this. So if I had to play that, it'll be this. Okay, so you can hear all of that and how I've used my knowledge and my understanding to work for the song. I think that's so important for us to go through. Um, the other thing that I wanna talk about, uh, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of talking. Uh, what I want to talk about is less symbols. I mean, if you heard me playing, you would have noticed that there wasn't a lot of symbols in my playing. Uh, because especially when you're recording drums, symbols uh, tend to cover a whole lot in the mix and that's something that we don't want. And then again, if you look at it, I played my symbol in strategic parts. And then the other thing as well is that I used my 19-inch uh, my Dark Crash. So, because I didn't want to take away from uh, from what the acoustic guitar was doing, and because it was in the smaller section of the song, and it, I was not going into a bigger chorus, I didn't use any of my bright symbols. I used a very dark symbol, so it's set within the mix. That's also something that I think us as drummers need to pay attention to. I mean, even for myself, when I listen back to some of my recordings, uh, I could hear, gosh, like every second bar, I'm playing a crash, and there was no need for it. And sometimes you just need to sit in the groove for a lot longer and just let that groove breathe out. That we need to be listening to the notes. We need to be listening to the notes that have been played on the in the song. Is it a staccato note? Staccato meaning like very short. So then maybe I can play a jab. Uh, a jab is when you open and close the hi-hat. Or do I need to hit the crash symbol and then choke it with my hand, right? So those are the, all, all the kind of things that we need to be listening to as we are, we are playing and selecting what it is that we are going to be playing in the song. Uh, I was watching a movie today. Uh, I don't know if you guys can remember a movie called Cool Runnings. Uh, they were showing it on, on TV today and it came out in 1993. Yeah, it's such an excellent movie because there's so many little gems that you can take and you can apply it to your life from that movie. And one of them was the two guys that were in the bobsled uh, team for Jamaica were actually quarreling because one guy was saying, no, Sweden is the best team. We need to be copying them so that we can be successful. And the other guy was saying, okay, I hear what you are saying, but don't you think we need to be us and we need to be Jamaicans 
and we need to let our own Jamaican flair come out when we are when we are racing and that's what is going to set us apart and so that's something as well that I always try and instill in my students is that don't try and be like me or don't try and be like another drummer that you see be yourself on the drum kit and that's when people are going to appreciate it more and that's when God is going to appreciate it more when you are using your own artistic creation on the instrument I mean even if you listen to how I tune my drums and how it's EQ'd and processed it's it's a little bit different from how everybody else is doing it because I want it to be unique in the sense where this is how I like it to sound and this is how I feel drums should sound and so this as well is also likened to the Jared Princely brand and that's what we need to be trying to do we need not, not to be yes we should be learning from others but we should not be copying their styles and their ways of doing things we should be coming up with our own ways of doing things and I mean you can use it for any field that you are in be an innovator don't imitate innovate right? and the last step which for me is the most important thing is before I come down to record each session I always make sure that I pray and I'm always uh, reminded of my hands and I ask God to bless my hands and my feet and I ask him to please use that for his glory I feel and that a lot of drummers today are forgetting that and they're just more worried about playing beats and grooves and and stuff like that and not really worried about the spiritual aspect of it and I am asking God to use me through this ministry this is that's what it is I'm not doing this to make money I'm not doing this uh, as a job above everything else this is a ministry for me and this is how I'm giving back to God and to some sure people God. this may be another drum video and stuff like that but for me it goes a bit a whole lot deeper in the sense that I'm honoring honoring God with what he has blessed me with and I just want everybody as well to to try and think about what they're doing for God like that as well and uh, yeah so guys we are living through to some hectic times now please remember wash your hands social distancing uh, if you can avoid going out don't go out only go out for for things that you really need and please stay safe thank you so much and god bless cheers <laughs>